Okay, so uh, question 2021, this is a big uh, passage. Um, uh, some of the things I, I underline a few things here. A spot, a mixture is placed near the bottom left hand corner of paper and allowed to dry. Okay, so I'm gonna remember it has to be in the bottom left hand corner. Compounds will be more soluble uh, in the solvent and less attracted to the paper than others. Yeah, that makes sense. The solvent travels up the paper and we can see the solvent at the top level. And then um, at some point it is rotated by 90 degrees. And then they give us the equation for RF, which is the distance that a compound moves up the paper from the starting point over the distance that the solvent moves up the paper from the starting point. Okay, the compound over the solvent. And the distance, distances are measured between the centers of the spots that you see on the uh, passage. Okay, so... Um, First question, the RF value of cysteine on this paper. So the RF value is RF is going to be um, the uh, distance the compound moved over the distance the solvent went up. So uh, if we look at uh, for S, um, I'm gonna put a little S in front of this one um, for S and uh, the next one's gonna be for T. So for S, uh, RF for its cysteine. So what we see here, if you look carefully where cysteine is uh, in figure one, and you look in the center of that oval, it's not really a dot, it's an oval for a cysteine. And if you look at the center, you'll see that it's gone upwards. You can see on the Y, six centimeters. And you can also see the darkness that goes generally upwards, um, which is representing solvent S goes as high as 15 centimeters. So uh, we have six, we have six over 15, uh, which of course that's um, two over five, and uh, that's uh, 0 0.4. And then we have uh, for T, we look at T and we do the same thing um, for cysteine, and we see that it's moved away from T by three centimeters, and T's dark spot ends at 12 centimeters. That's where uh, it ends to the far right at, at 12 centimeters. So then we have, um, we have three over 12, uh, which is a quarter, and that's 0 0.25. Okay, and uh, that's uh, answer choice C for number 20. So we're moving on to question 21. In figure one, the highest RF value for the following amino acids. Okay, so now Acer gave you an easy one so that you get your uh, your bearings straight. And now we're gonna look at the center of the dots for some of these things. And we'll start with leucine and solvent S. So leucine and solvent S. I look at leucine and I see it way up there around 13 centimeters in the middle. And, and we already know we've established that solvent S goes up to uh, 15. So that's 13 out of 15 for answer A is 13 out of 15. And now we look at what B will have. B is leucine, uh, but in solvent T. So when I look at leucine in solvent T, leucine is going to about nine, a little bit more than nine, um, and then out of 12, as we established before. So it's a little bit more than nine out of uh, 12 uh, for B. And then next is C, phenylalanine in solvent S. And so phenylalanine is uh, okay. So it's right at the top there. It's on the right of the word phenylalanine, not above it. And uh, it looks like it's at about 13.5 going up, and that's out of 15. So wow, that's, uh, that's pretty high so far. That seems to be the highest, 13.5 out of 15. Um, yeah, that seems to be the highest. And then uh, next is phenylalanine in solvent T. Phenylalanine again, uh, the oval, and we see it in the middle that looks like five, six, seven, eight, eight out of 12. So D is eight out of 12. So clearly uh, C wins the day. Um, that's the highest number. Um, uh, nothing's close. <laughs> 
So then uh, looking at uh, 22, an amino acid in figure one has the same RF value in both solvents, S and T. So, um, well, we've already done leucine and phenylalanine. We, we did that in uh, questions 21, and we saw they're different. So they're different for um, S and T. So we don't have to do C and D anymore. So let's look at glycine. And uh, by looking at glycine, we see that for solvent S, glycine is at 5 out of 15. So for solvent S, uh, lysine is 5 out of 15. And then for solvent T, lysine... Did I just say lysine? <laughs> okay, so glycine um, for solvent T. Let me let me look. Um, okay, there is there it is. So one, two, three, four out of twelve. So we have four out of twelve, and uh, that's some serious uh, grade three or grade four math um, uh, here. So we uh, clearly have a third and a third. They're both the same, and so the answer is A. Now we move on to uh, question uh, 23. So question 23. Four uh, amino acids are placed in solvent X, but different. And they have same values for X, but different for Y. Okay, so let's see what that would look like. So you have four that have the same for X, but different for Y. So if you had four and you, you, you put them in this, okay? So here's X. Okay, uh, don't worry, I only wrote X underneath that. Um, so, uh, so here's X, and um, we put a dot in the bottom left corner, just like the rules say. Okay, and um, then they have the same value. So that means they're all going to migrate up here. They're all going to migrate up here as a block, and they'll all be together. So this is only going to show one dot. Then... Uh, the, their instructions is that you move this thing by 90 degrees, okay? So that when you move it on the side by 90 degrees, this is going to be down here now, okay? The one dot, because this moved up as one dot because they were all the same. They all had the same value. Now they're here. Now with Y, they do have different values. So they're going to show different levels here uh, with Y. Now, remember X was down here. This is Y. So if we now want to look at this box, the same thing with X here and Y here, do you see you have to take this box and you have to move it onto its side uh, so that it could be uh, like this. And if you did that, then you would have a pattern like this. A pattern with the four going across like that. And, and that's consistent with answer choice D. So, uh, carrying on with uh, unit 7, but moving on to questions uh, 24 and uh, 25 uh, and 26. So, Five amino acids, alanine, glycine, lysine, etc., are mixed, and a spot of the mixture placed in the starting position of another piece of absorbent paper. In order to completely separate the five amino, amino acids, okay, which solvent can be used? Okay, so uh, five. We first we're going to have to look for those five amino acids and circle them. So um, find. Uh, alanine, uh, glycine, lysine, serine, threonine, and actually circle them so that um, we can see what this is all about, what this question is trying to say. So you mix together and um, in order to completely separate the five amino acids. Now, once, once I've had these circled, you can see that from solvent S's point of view, serine and glycine end the center of those circles are at the same level, five centimeters. And alanine and lysine, from the solvent S point of view, ends at nine centimeters, same level. So solvent S has not done a good job at separating these guys. 
But look from solvent T's point of view. All five are separated as you go from solvent T to the right. None of them are bunched uh, you know, on the same line at the same distance from solvent T. So, thus we can conclude that solvent T alone can be used to separate all five of those specific amino acids that they provided. So 24, answer choice B. Moving on to 25. Consider these uh, two statements concerning the uh, amino acids in figure one. So tyrosine has a greater affinity for solvent S and uh, tyrosine has a greater affinity for solvent T than does threonine. Okay, well keep in mind this, this idea of affinity is basically these things are, were put on this paper, uh, this paper chromatography, and it either had a greater affinity for the paper and stuck in the same spot, or it had a greater affinity for the solvent and then moved upwards. And the more it moved upwards with the solvent is the more affinity that it had for the solvent. So, um, and by the way, you know, you know, the principle of this is like dissolves like. Polar molecules like to be in uh, polar substances in general, and in general, apolar molecules, fatty molecules, can dissolve in, in fatty substances. You know, that's a classic example of things that are charged, have trouble crossing, crossing the plasma membrane, but things like steroid hormones or fatty uh, molecules can cross the plasma membrane because they can dissolve in the membrane. So like dissolves like. So tyrosine has a greater affinity for solvent S than threonine. So let's look at tyrosine and threonine. So tyrosine goes further for solvent S than does threonine. So tyrosine does have um, a greater affinity. Now, second, Roman numeral two, tyrosine has a greater affinity for solvent T than does threonine. So looking at solvent T, no, threonine has a greater affinity. Threonine goes further along um, the paper chromatography than does uh, three, threonine. So statement one is true, but statement two is not true. Uh, next 26, consider these, these statements. <laughs> so my, my copy has a bunch of typos, I don't know. And by the way, I'm, I have the, an original, uh, you know, Acer book uh, here. So there's, this is no uh, copy, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> But I'm um, just saying that it has so many uh, little typo, uh, typos. So anyway, consider these, these statements concerning lysine and the two solvents S and T shown in figure one. So uh, the question is, lysine has a greater affinity for solvent S than for the paper. Lysine for solvent S. So I'm looking for lysine and I find lysine at nine centimeters and it's a total of 15. So for, for lysine, for lysine, um, uh, if I look at the RF value, I get uh, 9 centimeters out of 15. So that's more than half. So if it went halfway, that would be one thing, but it's gone more than halfway. So its affinity is greater uh, for the solvent, which is solvent S, um, than it has for paper. Yeah, it makes sense. Then uh, Roman numeral 2, lysine has a greater affinity for solvent T than for the paper. So I look for solvent T and lysine, whoa. Uh, lysine for solvent T it only has uh, one centimeter out of 12. So clearly lysine has greater affinity for the paper than for solvent T. So uh, statement two is definitely false. And then statement three, lysine has a greater affinity for solvent S than for solvent T. That is clear by these numbers. Uh, lysine has a greater affinity for solvent. So statements one and three are true, but two is not true, and we can say false. <laughs> and so uh, uh, 26 is D, answer choice D. And um, and just in case you didn't know, uh, Acer didn't mention it, but uh, RF uh, stands for retardation factor. I am not making this up. You have a computer, you can check. No comment. So we move on to the next one.